right, I think we have enough people to get started. And um, Mia just texted and said she's running a little bit late. She's just trying to get her computer to cooperate. And um, Jay may not be able to make it. He has a conflict with another city committee that he's on. Um, though he might try to pop in later. And I think that's who I've heard from. So we'll call to order um, the meeting of the Montpelier Roxbury Public Schools uh, School Safety and Police Relations Committee. And I don't see any public present aside from Orca Media. So I think we can skip uh, public comment and move to the consent agenda for approval of meeting minutes. We've got March 16th. March 17th and March 23rd that Joan has linked into the chat. I don't know if people have had enough time to review them if, you're, if you want to take a minute before we vote. I'll wait for a motion. If someone ends up feeling ready, then speak up. I always feel like I shouldn't. If I typed it, then it's, it seems sketchy for me to say, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> a conflict of interest? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve meeting minutes from March 16th, March 17th, and March 23rd. Is there a second? I'll second. Great. Susan? Aye. Amanda? Aye. Joan? Aye. Catherine? Aye. William? Aye. Edie? Aye. Eliana? Aye. And Evans, oh, Zach did come. Zach? Aye. And I think that's it. My dog is wanting to participate tonight. <laughs> um, okay, so the, the first part of the agenda is the plan is to break up into our working groups for about 25 minutes um, and just have some time to review what you've done and maybe add to it um, before coming back to share the first draft of whatever you've created. Um, does that sound good or just are there any questions before heading into those breakout rooms? I'm going to tend to the dog for just a second. <laughs> The breakout rooms sound good to me because I think our group, we, we were hoping to use some time to work tonight. So that feels good to me. Okay. Um, I have created the, the breakout groups the same way that I did last time for that work meeting that we had, which some of you weren't there for, but basically the, um, I'll open breakout rooms and then you'll be able to choose which one you go into. Um, and some, some people, I think it was like co-hosts couldn't choose. So whoever's left behind, I'll make sure you get into the right room. And Orca can choose whichever room they want to go into. Oh, it looks like the old timing, like two hours was left <laughs> on there. So I'll just, when it's time, I'll close breakout rooms. So is anyone not seeing the option to join a breakout room, Amanda? I it. Maybe I'm not going to the right spot. It's okay. I'll just put you into budget. I'm going to, um, for you and Zach, I'm going to stay in the main room just for a minute to make sure everybody gets to a room. And then I'll come back. I, I can't choose, Emma. Please, please put me in policy. Okay. That's funny that because this time you're not a co-host. I know. It's really... Okay, so um, 
We have a break scheduled for 610, which is in eight minutes. Um, we could take that start that break now instead and come back come back at 610, which would be an eight minute break. Does that feel good to everyone? Okay. It's always nice to get ahead of the game. So yeah, let's break until 10 past six. Okie dokie. So the um, next part of the agenda is just, just have a presentation or a reading of the first draft from each group. So I have um, the core values group listed first. And do you want to project anything? I can make you a co-host so you can do that. Sure. I mean, it's short, but... Um, sure. You should be able to now. Uh, share screen. This one. Okay. Um, and I should so, say that we have about 15 minutes per group. So I was thinking like presentation and then sort of like question and answer or helping to fine tune and then move on to the next group. Yes. Um, so we, um, the, eventually this will become a vision statement, but at the moment we just split up um, the core values and there were, there are three of us and there were six sections. So we've each taken two and we are still in the process of revising them um, from their initial role as a, a guiding principle for our work um, to then an intermediary focus of additional brainstorming bullet points, stuff we threw at them a few weeks ago, um, to a final form of um, what once we have all revised our separate value sections, um, then we plan to um, and make it all one thing that is a vision statement to, to that is faces the future of this work as we pass it off to the board. Um, so the initial, so these will probably all smoosh together in some way that they have not done so yet. Um, a lot of it has been summarizing some of the bullet points and making them paragraph formed or separating them into new forms. Um, the, the initial one, the first paragraph is pretty much unchanged. And then a facing the future discipline and mediation must be grounded in the principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Current policies and practices should be re-examined through an equity lens. The use of trauma-informed practices and restorative justice should be upheld with consistent fidelity throughout the entire school community. Mostly what we talked about just now um, for the past 20 minutes or so. Um, was about um, consistency and and communication, and the three schools, um, how they can, how a district wide um, policy and four, practice and four schools, four, four schools. schools, four schools because Roxbury. My apologies, Roxbury. Yes, all of the schools um, can um, get more on the same page and how that would help. And so, as you can see, some of this is still being um, drafted and hashed out. Um, and a lot of what we just talked about was giving ourselves permission to depart from the initial draft now that these same principles are, um, are doing something new. So out of the, the initial hesitancy that all of us felt to like change it only slightly because this was such an important document to now throw ourselves into changing it a lot um, as it transforms to a new purpose. And yes, my apologies for the draftiness, the incompleteness of it. Um, but we're feeling, we're feeling good about the steps ahead within the time frame that we have. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, questions or anything I forgot to say. I just want to clarify the timeline here for people. I don't know if um, everyone talked about it in their groups, but um, we are tentatively on the agenda for the school board to present our work to them 
on April 14th. So we would have another meeting next Tuesday, um, or we could skip next Tuesday and do the 13th. And then we had planned on having like an hour long meeting before prior to um, the board meeting on the 14th. So I think it's totally fine. And that's the core values part is a pretty heavy lift. Um, it's there's a lot there and, and we want to get it right. So I appreciate the time that you're taking on that. And I think it makes sense that it's drafty <laughs> currently. Um, and I definitely like the the statement that you wrote for the first one. Um, there was sort of like a paragraph that was more about the core value and then another paragraph about how it relates to now looking at safety through the lens of this core value. I think that was a really solid formatting. I need a little bit of a reminder of what the um, what the purpose of adding or sort of um, rewording the core values is for the April 14th meeting. We probably discussed this two weeks ago and I've just, <laughs> um, but yeah. It's a bit of a blur for me too, but um, reconstructing it. Um, as I understand it, it's partly just um, reframing the same basic principles um, and, and passing the baton to the school board. Um, and it's a, so it's a shift of focus um, and it's a shift of, I mean, some of the sentences in the original things that we drafted just cut and paste and fit right in. Um, but from this, from the really focused work of this committee to the broader work that we've been talking about of um, new policies and district wide things and what we hope to see. Um, it's it, it's sorry long day. Um, it's a shift of um, it feels like a pretty significant shift of um, direction and intent, even if the articulated value is identical. Um, and a lot of the, like we drafted the original document and then there was a moment about a month ago when we went back to it. Um, was that a month ago? I don't remember. Um, and we just threw a lot more things at it. We did more brainstorming in groups and we split them up. Um, we each took a couple values and then switched up the values and, and added a whole bunch of bullet points um, that was this great generative brainstorming exercise that that opened up the application of each foundational thing from the SRO question to the larger questions that we're handing off. Um, but they were also all over the place because it was that kind of brainstorming session of, um, I mean, I just described it in our breakout group as throwing spaghetti at the wall. Um, so there's just a lot um, more material that we're trying to honor while also make coherent. Um, and so a, a lot of moving things at, around, a lot of noticing redundancies when we added bullet points that are more or less identical to more than one of the values. Um, it's uh, the wrestling with those additional brainstorming material um, is a lot of what we're trying to honor as we redraft it. Susan? I was also thinking that um, it, it's sort of like going to be handy for the board, right? As they're making decisions, it's sort of like this guide or whatever, like while you're making decisions, please keep this in mind. And I, I as, as somebody who works in this district, it's really helpful to have those guides. You know, we have a, we're sort of looking at things when it, with an equity lens now. So a guide of thinking about equity, diversity, and inclusion. So I, um, I think that's another purpose of the document eventually. Yeah, um, Catherine? Yeah, um, you know, the elementary school parents group put together an equity checklist and that's what kind of popped in my mind with this. It's like kind of like a checklist for the board or for whoever uses it, so. 
Yeah. Oh, Joan, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just gonna say that's all helpful. And I guess I just didn't realize that the core values were like reopen. I thought that they were sort of finished um, and they were presented. Uh, so I, I guess I didn't, I missed the part in our process where they kind of got reopened for further evaluation and rewording. Yeah, I see it also as like, like Susan said, as um, directly tying the core values and sort of explaining how we see these core values fitting into the future of safety and restorative practices and justice and, you know, discipline and behavior management and all of that stuff within the schools now that we're moving forward with sort of a new model that doesn't include a direct presence of armed police officers. So I, that's why I was talking about the formatting of that first one. It seemed like you had done the most work maybe on that first one. And it was like a nice succinct explanation of the core value that was sort of reflective of what we had originally written. And then a second paragraph explaining how we hope that these will be implemented moving forward, um, what they look like in practice. That's the goal. And yes, we're, we're it would be a much heavier lift to completely open them up to um, creating whole new core values um, or like they're, the, the, the goal is very much to keep them the same and just to switch the application. Um, yeah, and I think the board will appreciate sort of the consistency of like, this was the I, one of the most important things that this committee did was sort of identify with the community through all these different processes of what our core values are around safety in schools. And now here, this is how we see them, you know, sort of in practice moving forward. Um, does anyone have anything else to add in terms of what we're hoping um, this product will look like when it's finished? This just came to me and it might actually be me assigning work to my working group and not to the <laughs> um, vision statement working group. But I wonder if it, we have this list of um, policies that we've identified that could use some updating thanks to the work that this committee has done. And I wonder if it's worth us tying, say like the harassment, bullying, harassment and hazing policy and saying, we think that it's particularly weak or I don't know, could use improvement around compassion, empathy, and belief in each other. So we have a strong recommendation, not just to use the value statement in general, but to really dig into how do we live out this value of com compassion, empathy, and belief in each other through a policy that addresses how we interact with each other in sometimes not our best moments. So you're the committee, you're planning on writing a like a one page sort of introduction vision statement type thing in addition to the work that you're doing on the core values. Um, there's some debate as to whether there is a, a an introductory vision statement or whether the core values themselves become the vision statement um, by by redrafting them with this different focus and different direction and different application. Um, the revised description of each value is kind of becoming the vision statement um, itself. So, um, so I'm not sure we need, I mean, depending on how the next couple of steps of revising go, um, they, might, they might not be two different documents. They're, they're beginning to merge, um, at least if, in my brain. Stop me if that sounds terrible. I could picture it being presented like PowerPoint style with like a vision for safety through the lens of the core values, you know, and then each core value talking about what the vision of safety is through the lens of that core value. And not and not needing, you know, a vision statement. What do other people think?
I also want to make sure like if there's questions um, from the committee members, the working group members, you know, that you would like help from the larger group, you know, is there anything that you need from us while we're all together? I'm sure there's a really smart question to be asked in this moment. <laughs> I'm sure it exists. We can come back to it. We could also do it over email. <laughs> Okay, so we'll move on to policy recommendations. And we only have Mia here to represent your working group. <laughs> I don't mean we only have Mia <laughs> in that way. Um, thank Emma, you have access to this document. It, I shared it with you earlier today, so you could just go ahead and screen share for folks to all be looking at the same thing. It's entitled SSPR Committee Recommendations Policy. Okay, a little slow going, but I think I have it. No problem. It's um, fairly straightforward, I think, um, and definitely open to feedback on the um, on what we're planning on including. But the two main things we're planning on including are the the act the recommendations around policies themselves, um, and then what the board should consider and keep in mind um, when either writing a brand new policy or reviewing a policy. Uh, so, or redrafting. So, um, under the policy recommendations themselves, the one that we found that is um, a, a missing piece of the district's, you know, policy platforms or whatever is um, there is no policy around conflict resolution or, you know, sort of the old way of thinking about it, um, discipline. And then there's a set of maybe a half dozen or so, if you scroll down, Emma of policies that we identified that could use some updating through this new lens of, what's, of what our safety values are. Um, and then if you scroll down even further, there's the, um, oh, sorry, before we move on to the considerations, we are, I, we are also, nope, go ahead, keep scrolling, Emma. This paragraph here, the committee is not recommending writing an MOU with the Montpelier Police Department was something that we, um, after discussions with um, both Superintendent Bonesteel and the um, and Jay, our, uh, our city representative, had a conversation with Chief Pete, um, and both of them felt it wasn't really necessary, and we concurred um, that because the district doesn't have a formal relationship with the police department, um, an MOU doesn't really make sense. However, because the district, because there will still be interactions um, of police with um, people within our schools, that the sort of way that our values can and should be represented around that can live in the conflict resolution policy. Um, and then the this at uh, the bottom here are some considerations that we are. Uh, or things that we're asking the board to keep in mind when updating or writing policies. Um, number one there is that the community values around safety or you know vision statement, whatever we end up naming this just so that it's consistent throughout all of our documentation, we'll call it that here as well. Um, we'd want the board to start with those as, a, to, as the lens through which they're viewing any policy that they're gonna write or update. Um, <clears throat> the next thing to keep in mind is that policy is where accountability lives, um, including any data that we think we need to gather in order to measure progress um, or hold ourselves accountable. Um, Jen mentioned uh, that district administrators update handbooks and procedures every summer, and they are, look at policy, of course, in order to make sure that their procedures are compliant with that. Um, and that we can best articulate the learning environment we aspire to by using positive languages in our policies and framing in our policies. So many of them are written as like, you may not or you shall not do or whatever. And we think um, one of the ways that we can 
really lean into nonviolent communication, for example, is to have that framed in certainly naming very clear expectations, but have it framed more in a positive way. Um, and then the last one is that most of people in our community are not familiar with our policies. So not necessarily that this is something that you would do in drafting it, but we're asking the board to keep in mind and to be thinking about ways to make policies more than just transparent, because of course they all live on our website, but how is it that we bring the community into participating in these policies? So that's what we have so far. Um, oh, if you can scroll back up, please, Emma. One thing I was working on um, when I was in my breakup group by myself um, was looking around, particularly for the conflict resolution policy to see if there are any examples. Um, and then I started moving on down to other ones, um, but I didn't get very far but managed to find a real gem uh, at the Seattle Public Schools um, has a very simple, so this is the next phase of the work, basically, you know, kind of at, at you know, between now and the board meeting is, I'll be doing, and, and others are welcome to as well, a little bit of research to see what else is out there that we could offer as, um, uh, you know, just for the board to look at and build off of. Um, yeah, so this right here, introduction and policy statement, those two paragraphs right there are, um, that's it. That's the Seattle Public Schools Policy on Conflict res Resolution. Um, it is rooted in, as you can see right above it, beliefs, um, which to me feel like the work that um, we are, have been doing around, you know, safety values. Uh, so there, there's, and then just so you can see like as they share this stuff with the community, it's all linked very clearly on their website. So questions, thoughts, offerings? My first thought is, dang, that was a good job. <laughs> Thank you. I'll open it up now to other It's questions. a lot, it was a team effort. We had many different conversations to put all this together. I, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I, I really um, like that you're focusing on that conflict resolution. It's definitely missing. Um, I was thinking down when you at I can't remember now, but down at the bottom with the considerations and how I'm just wondering where we can add student voice. I don't mm -hmm. know how student voice can be considered. I don't know if we have a student rep on the school board or like where student voice can be come into policy creation or revision. I, I worked with Burlington High School students a couple of years ago and redrafting the handbook. Um, as it really impacted them and they didn't really agree mm. with a lot of the policy. So I don't know if, yeah, I just don't know where, if we can include student voice more. That's great. Then the next thing I was gonna ask for was any additions, anything, mm -hmm. anything you think need to be added. So I, I definitely, it, it's named in our value statement, but I don't see any reason not to pull it out and, and say a specific, name it specifically as a consideration. And after seeing all these policies, Mia, it really does kind of make me think that it might be nice to link them to our core values, like what you were saying earlier. Yep. Yeah, it could be like a sub point under each suggested policy. This is one where we think it could really use some, some beefing up. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Amanda, I knew there was something else. You asked specifically, is there a student rep on the school board? And there, there is, um, there has been in the past, I think there's like the aspiration to have one, but we, I don't think we have like a real clear process. At least I don't know what the process is for a student to join, to be appointed to the school board. I, it doesn't live it actually doesn't live in our policies. I don't think, because I've read the board expectation policy and I'm not sure there's anything about a student rep on we that one. We discussed at one of our last few meetings and they, uh, Jim talked about how they, I, I know that when I used to watch board meetings, it was like, there was always two students on the board. Um, they don't participate in decision-making. I don't think they vote um, and they don't participate in executive session. Um, but, it's definitely on the radar, but we should bring it back up on the radar and just make yeah. it happen. I think it was when we transitioned to Zoom and virtual meetings that we sort of lost track of having students um, involved in that. But 
as we know, students are very good participators in virtual <laughs> committees. So um, I'll bring it back up with Jim. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, I had a question. I understand the statement about the MOU with the police mm -hmm. department. And I just wonder about um, like ensuring that when, when police are involved, that the practices they're using agree with our core values. And yeah. I know that's like not really our job, that's the police department job, but I also feel like it is a little bit our job. So can you talk about that a little? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I, I would agree with you that it is incumbent on us to set a standard and an expectation to say that when we are asking you to assist, there are certain things we're going to ask you to follow on because they meet the building expectations. Now, even as I say that out loud, I can see how like they can't, that can't be like, if there's an emergency and the police show up, they have to follow their own set of protocols for that. So there's probably, there's gotta be some sort of balance of those things. But um, I think, I think that's what we meant by having that um, named in the conflict resolution policy. Um, and then from there, it's a matter of the district staff, in this case, it would be Libby, um, I think working with the police department to say, this is then what we need to put in place as far as like actual procedures. We definitely could bring that up to, or when I say we, Will has stepped up to volunteer to help be our liaison with the city committee that's working on analyzing uh, police practices in our town. And so that could be something that we make sure from our committee that we add to their template you know, our core values, yep. something like that. Yeah. And, and I think the other place it can live is in the, re, the one in the handbooks, because Jen was saying that it's in the handbooks is where it's laid out. These are the situations under which you would call the police. So it's not necessarily that the school handbook doesn't say, and here's how the police should behave when they show up, but it does get to the, um, establishing the standards for when it is appropriate to call the police and when it's not. And I think one of the changes we're working on, we very broadly um, in the district, is our shifting habits from um, the default of, okay, we gotta call the police right now. So, so I think it makes sense to, to something that's more like, this is now how we handle a situation like X, Y, or Z. Whereas before the default was to call the police and that takes some time and some work to, and, and should also should live in the handbooks. It sounds like is the right place for that. Mia, was there anything that came up in your working group um, that you would want specific feedback from this group while we're all together? Just any additions to this stuff around are there things that the board should be considering when updating policies? Um, I think we have a pretty good, I, I think we've gotten pretty comprehensive on which policies um, need addressing. So it's more of the considerations part. Okay, any other questions or input for Mia? Um, I just like looking at all of it, I've been thinking about the importance of the data collection part, because I feel like I was just wondering if, if we're hoping that's like an annual sort of thing. And that like influences the, the like reviewing the handbook every year and stuff like that. But I don't know, I just like, I hope that that's a really key part of the recommendation because mm -hmm. that's just like actual evidence that can be used every year. And I just really liked, um, you linked something, it was the Western Justice Center Foundation. They like have a clear connection between like um, conflict resolution practice, education and how that is directly tied to academic achievement. 
and right. I just like would really hope that the school like considers that but mm -hmm. I think it's you have a really great draft so far thank you And putting some of these comments or adding them as comments into your document, Mia. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the handbook too, that um, it feels like the handbook is like sort of quickly revised and really by only school administrators. And I feel like student voice and staff voice and that more eyes could be on that handbook. I mean, when we brought it up, it was like, not everyone knew where to find it or what exactly it was or you know if there was a separate one for each school so it, it seems like there could be a process by which you know maybe at one of the maybe maybe some teachers are given like a stipend to like give an hour of their time over the summer to look at the handbook and make comments on how it could be revised because it does feel a little bit like things quickly evolve and best practices change and that handbook end up, ends up staying a little bit outdated and we're always playing catch up with it. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we could type in as a recommendation under the bullet points, but um, I would like to see a more collaborative process when looking at revising the handbook annually. Yeah, Emma, I was just going to jump in, sorry, Eliana, um, and just say it used to be like a printed handbook, right? And now it's just scanned in printed pages. So it's not even like, you know, it's, it, it, it's really already way outdated. So working off of that doesn't make sense. Like maybe revitalizing the handbook or rethinking the, maybe it, need, it should be a website instead of a handbook or something like that. Um, so I, I'm right there with you on that. Yeah, like like a wiki doc, yeah. I was just thinking like another way to include more um, student voice in that revision would just be like sending out a similar survey to the one that we just sent out to the students about their knowledge of the current um, conflict resolution practices. Because I think as a baseline, like a lot of kids just don't really know what it is and that's really interesting and I think if we could watch that change over the next few years like that would be a really good indicator of how well our policies are doing um, and I don't know who would send it out or if that would happen but I just like I wouldn't want to just cast that aside because I think it was really cool and yeah if if we couldn't have like a, it's just an indirect way to have a lot of student input in that revision I guess. Just broadly, um, I something I've noticed about um, handbooks at, at a bunch of different schools and a bunch of different kinds of schools and how terrible they usually are. Um, it, there's, they're, they're often um, reactionary in that they, they describe some sort of thing just went wrong that the handbook did not help with. And so language will be added to the handbook of the kind that we wish had been there a month ago before the thing went wrong. So it's always, there's just a weird kind of time travel and very rarely a forward thinking um, revision or, or sensibility while drafting them. Um, the, and so the, so what, um, I, I, I wish what you're describing now had it was a process that had been envisioned and put into practice for pretty much every student and faculty handbook I've seen. They're, they're, they're usually very patchwork um, things trying to respond to something that's already happened. Yeah, making it more proactive and less reactive. Um, and I like the idea of it being like a website, something that when you make a change, it's immediately seen, you don't have to wait for it to be like republished at the end of the year, you know, and the whole, it definitely relates to all of our conversations around communication and transparency, 
and like bringing people into the fold and letting them know like what our values are and what, and what our systems are. Um, so that also could be part of the core values work somewhere. I'm sure it already is. But the handbook could directly be named in that. So um, are we OK to move on to the budget recommendations? OK, I'm going to hope for Amanda to take the lead on that. Do you want me to um, project, Amanda, or share screen? And then, Zach, I figured I would just share, since your internet connection isn't great, unless you want to hop in. That sounds good with me. I can add anything in the chat if it's wacky. <laughs> Great, I appreciate it. Um, so Emma's going to share um, what we have in a very drafty form as well. <laughs> um, some ideas for the school board around um, budget and spending money. So this community liaison position was um, given to us as an idea from Libby Bone Steel um, as we're getting a, a pretty hefty, I don't know what the number is, a uh, chunk of money, the district for um, recovery. I think it's for recovery. I'm not really sure what it's for exactly. Um, and since the SRO position is no longer, um, we've eliminated it and a big part of what the SRO did was working on truancy. The idea was hiring um, a person I don't know, the title could be something different, a community liaison position that would be um, working um, with uh, families, caregivers, and students who are struggling with truancy. Um, so we just bulleted some ideas of what that position, like what we'd be looking for with somebody um, in that position. So um, a social worker, licensed mental health counselor, um, they would build and maintain strong and positive relationships with students, families, community resources, schools. Um, again, this is all in draft form, so we'll welcome any feedback. Um, advocate for families and students, work closely with the school counselors, social workers, administration, facilitate and attend meetings. I'm not gonna read word for word, um, unless you guys want me to. Um, provide a bridge between school and home for students and families by providing families and community support uh, and resources that will help them to be in a better position to engage. So really the whole idea of this person, they're trauma informed with um, resiliency practices, restorative justice um, experience, um, conflict resolution experience, um, experience working with diverse families and systems, family systems, um, and they would really help like they would we don't have like Libby told me they don't we don't have a lot of folks who are truant but it's a handful who need a lot of direct support and could really use um, wraparound like really targeted wraparound support um, and what else did I want oh the other piece is that I um, am going to bring this idea to the social workers in the school uh, in both all three schools um, to get their feedback and ideas um, and suggestions around this position as well um, and add to it before I write up a whole job description. Um, and then the last piece was um, that's highlighted there is to help create a local community support network who can be called upon to advocate for students and their caregivers based on their prior experience with either truancy, community justice, local police. So I think the idea here is like to really utilize um, community members who have had experience potentially with truancy or the police, if that's what we're dealing with and can really provide a support um, to our students and families and advocate in that way. So that's the first idea. It's a pretty big idea, I guess. Um, and then other ideas we had for the budget were trainings. Um, the district's already moving towards restorative practices. Um, so I suspect that's already in the budget, but to really re-emphasize the importance of that. And we kind of put down some ideas of who, um, who could be beneficial to do trainings. Um, the district's already using John Kidda, who, who works with lots of school districts in the state to do trainings. Um, 
And then trauma-informed practices and resiliency. So thinking about um, trainings and consultation with um, currently the district's using Joelle Van Lent, um, maybe continuing with that. Um, there's another woman she works with, Jillian Boudreau. And then um, we just recently added Dave Melnick, who is a psychologist who works I think he worked with our district, Emma said, like seven years ago um, on trauma training. Um, we have such, you know, there's staff turnover. So it's kind of like this training can't just be one and done, which I think we've done in the past. And it really needs to be reinforced and over and over again. Um, then we added mandatory conflict resolution training for all staff. Um, and then the last piece was the community justice center is just having money set aside if if needed for families to access the community justice center as i guess we we found out um last year families who were participating in the with the community justice center ended up having to pay a fee um, that was associated with it so if we had a chunk of change set aside to help families and caregivers and students with that That's what I, that's what we have so far for ideas. Any suggested edits, revisions, additions? I'll just say that I was able to follow up with Katie Berea today to interview her a little bit more about the questions we had presented to her and um, she did mention that truancy was a big issue that she feels is a gap at the middle school so I think she would be glad to hear there was going to be somebody to work with that. What yeah, I, I mean, I can just speak for myself. Like, I don't ever, I don't feel like I do students enough. I, I don't do enough for our students who are truant and I don't have enough time in my schedule. And it really needs like really specific and it just needs a lot of time and attention. So I think having a, a person dedicated to that could be really helpful, potentially. I don't know, it's a tough, tough issue. I think you guys did some really great work and I, I'm noticing themes under each one of those ideas, right? So it's like um, training in restorative justice practices, um, relationships with resources who, that can help. And I, I really wonder if we want to really hone in on the part about the trainings for everyone, you know, um, I feel like that's really going to be super important, including like bus drivers and coaches and like everyone, everyone. <laughs> and, um, that's going to be expensive and kind of a challenge, but I, I think it's, we definitely want to highlight it um, and emphasize it. I mean, I appreciate this work you guys did. It's a really good plan. It's exciting. Yeah, I, I agree, Susan, it, like everybody needs to be included. And that's just partly like if we're building relationships, everyone should feel like they they matter and are part are important in in the school. Yeah, that's reminding me of um, Andrew LaRosa did a presentation at the um, board meeting last last board meeting about um, the facilities, all the different buildings. And one thing he really highlighted was the um, the head of maintenance at the middle school really leans into developing relationships with students and how they have, I don't know if it's a causation or simple, simply a correlation, but there's no graffiti. There's like no graffiti at the middle school and that it's not necessarily that students are afraid they're going to get in trouble. It's like they have a relationship with this guy. And anyway, that was what he was highlighting. And it just, I'm remembering that now talk, as you all are saying, like, Everybody should have this, these, you know, build up these skills. I don't I really, know. Oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Eliana. Oh, I was just going to say, I really like that. Like, it's making me think of a sort of like a Russian doll. Like the inside is these really strong 
relationships with everyone and really, really awesome practices we have within the schools. And then, but once we can't necessarily deal with something any, anymore, if it gets beyond our, our, our capacity, we have this other shell that's just this still really strong resource, like the community justice center, or even if it has to be the police sometimes, like, and we just keep going out into these other layers of like really strong systems. And I just like, it's really cool that to em emphasize the, the most inner shell as well, because that's where it all starts just with the relationship. So not any feedback, but I was just thinking that. I love that metaphor. <laughs> Um, on this trainings piece, I don't know um, if it lives here in the budget, but it feels like there's something around, and I, this might just be, I don't know that it, it, it exists already and I don't know that it exists, but there's something around like, is there any sort of measurement of, of our progress along the lines of getting more and more proficient in conflict resolution and using restorative practices um, so that it's like, we now have, I don't know, 75% of, of district staff are fluent and can, can intervene, not intervene, well, whatever. I, 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 as you can see, I wouldn't know what that measurement would be necessarily. And again, I'm not sure it lives in the budget or maybe it goes into policy, but um, it feels like what we need to be doing is like setting these like benchmarks for us to be moving toward on this long journey of we're always working to get better at it, of course, um, but that we are moving in like towards some sort of goal. Yeah, I, may I, I think that's a good idea. We need to put that somewhere. I just don't know where. <laughs> Well, and I almost wonder if it's kind of like, um, you know, the each building or each school sets its goals, right, for the year. Mm. So, and they vary, right, with, with the ages and the levels. So it might be a task for each school to have one of their yearly goals focused on conflict resolution, right? I mean, that might be enough <laughs> to start. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, that could be part of the like handbook revision process at the tail end. It's like, oh, so now we can see that we didn't necessarily comply with what we said. And so how can we turn that into a goal for the next year? I just had a little thought about the um, community liaison position. And I'm wondering like, if there's data around truancy, which I'm sure there is, if if you know at what grade level or which school it's the most problematic, and if we might um, recommend this person's office be in that school, whichever school is sort of struggling with it the most, um, unless it's just a dead heat across all schools. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that, Emma. I, I do think that the issues are different based on the age, um, but I don't know where, I bet it's the same across the board, but well, I don't know. Maybe Libby has that data. I don't know if I can like eloquently further the Russian doll <laughs> metaphor, but it's sort of like, you know, it does seem to all boil down to relationships. And if there's like strong relationships and sort of a strong understanding of the value around like consistently attending school and being part of the school community, if that's sort of instilled from a young age and this person, this social worker starts to work with families at a very young age and they build their relationships when they're in middle school and then they like move through the system with them, maybe. Can we, can we make that fit to the Russian doll? <laughs> um, okay, so should we move on to the report out to the community group? 
And do one of you want to project or share screen? I think we'll have a couple different things to share. Should we, do we, Susan, do you want to start with your the sure. one pager? Sure, I think I can share. I think I have the ability. Um, yeah, I just keep making people co-hosts. In the end, we'll just all be co-hosts. So um, one of, we, we had a couple of different ideas of sharing to the, for the community. And um, this was one of them and it's really draft and the little icons don't really work. Um, they're just there as placeholders. But um, it, it's sort of like a one pager, a graphic design thing, just reporting out what we did as a team. And it's trying to keep it pretty simple um, and trying to relate to sort of your average community member who hasn't been involved in the process, sort of what we've been doing. And so it's really just a head start. And as I said, the graphics don't really work. Um, but um, Eliana and Joan and I came up with these headers and then we thought we could, you know, populate the content a little bit. But that's one of the things we were thinking would be real handy. And we could have it in a physical form or it could actually be shared electronically. Um, we thought we could talk to Anna a little bit, Anna Hipko, because that is part of her job, <laughs> is, um, public relations and social media. Um, so that's just one thing we've just barely started on. Um, and then we had a couple other ideas of what ways to share out. So I'll stop now. And also with that, like, if people were intrigued by it, which they will be, they can like um, access all of our materials um, with if it's online like everything we've used so the document will be pretty straightforward but there's more underneath it that people can access um and we also talked to oh will did you want to add a comment i did just a i like the current icons that though at least one of them implies that there's a vaccine against bullying <laughs> so, that sounds great there was a person in a bathing suit that I covered up, but I couldn't cover up earlier. <laughs> but I don't know what that was on. Um, we also talked about possibly um, preparing a short commentary for our local newspapers that um, it, it could, I guess we can talk about this more, whether it would be on behalf of the committee as a whole, or if individual members of the committee would just independently sort of um, publish this, but I can share an outline. Oh, that's the wrong button. Um, While you're sharing, I'm going to yep. just bring this up now because this was something that I think I forgot. I don't know if I, I can't remember if I brought it up at the last meeting or not, but um, there are a couple of Senate bills, right, at the Vermont legislature around um, school resource officers and uh, even sort of behavioral discipline type of policies. And they have an interest in having, um, um, what's the formal word for it? Testimony? Testimony. Testimony. So yeah, I thought perhaps, I mean, we would want to run it by Libby and make sure that it was okay for the committee um, to be included in that testimony. But individual committee members could testify or we could try to do something um, as a group. Um, so this is, this is just an outline of what could be included and it's really meant to be more informational than sort of take, you know, advocating for any particular policies. Um, but something pretty short, you know, 500 words or so that basically talks through, um, why the, why our committee's work is important, a summary of what, you know, what our charge was, the timeline of what we've done why it's important for the whole community to know about this and care about it um, and really just summarizing the main points of the presentation made in February, the final outcomes that we'll deliver at the April meeting and inviting people to learn more by checking out the website. Um, so it's really, this is really just designed, as I said, designed to be really a report in the sort of objective sense, um, but you bringing up the bills, Emma, you know, I, yeah, so um, there could be further opportunity for other kinds of commentaries, either from the committee as a whole or just individuals. Um, and um, Eliana had raised the, the thought of 
um, having the students on our committee kind of take the lead on actually writing this, um, which I guess you three can decide if you um, if you want to take that on. Um, and um, yeah, and then we can decide whether this is something that's sort of signed as the committee, whether it is, I don't know exactly what the protocol is for that sort of, for this sort of thing in terms of public statements, which this would fall under in the category, right, of a public statement, so. I can look into that question. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Um, Eliana, do you want to add anything? Well, yeah, also like just looking at both what Susan presented and what you presented, I feel like we could also try to make them overlap like even a little more. Like the, the commentary can just be a more in-depth version of the one pager, um, but also including the points you mentioned because they're really important, so yeah. yeah. And also it Mia said that it looks like a script of a podcast episode. And that's what uh, what another one of our uh, one of our ideas um, was to present to the community. So, yeah, yeah, and I think I mean having the same main points in like these different formats is actually great because some people will will listen to the podcast and others will read the paper and others will be like drawn to the really visual graphic thing, um, but probably not everyone's going to check out all all three. Um, and then the last idea was, I don't know, Susan, do you want to say more about the Mary Mello Bridge connection? Oh, sure. So Mary Mello has been consistently writing articles for the bridge that are about sort of crucial issues in our school district. And um, I think everybody knows her, but she was a longtime kindergarten teacher in the district. Was she your teacher, Emma? Was she? <laughs> she was. She was my <laughs> kindergarten teacher. And then she also was Petra's kindergarten teacher. <laughs> So she's retired now, but she's taken on writing. And um, I thought she might be able to help us write a, um, or help us share some of our information. She sort of has a particular style of being gentle and sort of being kid focused. So it would, it might be another interesting way to share some of the work we've done. Um, I haven't had a chance to connect with her yet, but I hope to soon, if that sounds good to the group. Honestly, yeah, that sounds so cool. Like I didn't really, I didn't know it had this sort of different tone and I feel like that's really important because making our information as palatable to anyone as possible is like really cool in terms of like transparency and stuff so I like that and we haven't you know since we're part of what we're putting together is just summarizing um, the work we've done and then once we've finished up after April 14th, we'll be able to actually finish. So our, our work will kind of have to continue a little bit past um, that April board meeting, just based on whatever we all you know, put together and present. Um, but yeah, any thoughts? I wanna thank you, Joan, for just like bringing up the idea of having this as one of the end products, because as you're talking about it, it's like the most exciting part for me. Like, I'm very excited about the ideas that you're talking about. Um, and I think it's going to be really necessary because we've actually, this committee has sort of become like a beacon for people all across the state that are considering removing their school resource officers. And at the legislative level, when they're talking about it, we've been considered sort of a model, like somebody to point to and say, you know, they've been talking about the good work that the Montpelier committee has been doing. So all of you are sort of locally famous across Vermont for the work that we've done on this committee. And people have been emailing me a couple different school districts who are forming similar committees have emailed me to ask for input and explain our process and so this is exactly like if we had something easy to forward on and, and make public for other schools who are going through this process um, and at the state level for the work that they're doing, I think it's really valuable. So thank you. Yeah, I think this all looks so great what you guys have put together. So thank you for your what you've done so far. I am, like Emma said, really excited about it. Is it okay to put um, Edie, Eliana, and Zach on the spot for a moment and here if you all, if you think you'd be willing to draft that 
commentary. That'll just help us figure out like what the next steps are. That's that piece of um, the work. Or if you're if you're not ready to say it, that's fine too. You can we can circle back. I'm into it. Zach says yes in the yeah, chat. Yeah, um, we, yes, we talked, Eliana like asked us a little bit about that. Um, and I think Zach and I both said like, we could totally say some stuff there. Yeah, we could each just even take on a few bullet points and then like edit each other's work and stuff. Fantastic, I, I know, uh, in the draft that we created in our working group, Zach was, I feel like Zach, you have a future as an editor, <laughs> if you're interested, because your comments were so great, you know, and definitely added to our draft. Any other ideas or input or questions for that working group? Um, just want the thought on the podcast. I, I don't know how long it takes to like the lead up for these is, but it seems like, um, Libby and Anna have got a pretty good schedule going cause there's been four that come out now. So I'm wondering if it makes sense to email them and say, Hey, could we talk about this or get on your radar or, you know, and, and maybe signposted for shortly after the April 14th board meeting, um, to, to do it and see if one, if they think it would be a possibility and if they're open to it and then two, um, get it, get it scheduled and get, get the ball rolling on it. So it's not like too far after the fact. Um, and then figuring out who we think would be good guests. Cause I'm, I'm guessing it would be Libby interviewing people. That's how the format they've been doing so far. Um, and I don't know if any of you have listened to them. I think they're great. Um, she's interviewed staff of the district. She's interviewed a student. She's interviewed teachers. She's interviewed administrators. So we could probably just have our pick of the people in this committee <laughs> to, and I would definitely advocate for at least one of the students to be one of the interviewees, um, probably no more than three people. Um, I'd love to see one of our community members be one of, one of the interviewees and maybe Susan or Amanda. Like, I think that would be a really great rounding out of our cast of characters um so but i just wanted to flag it as it seems like we should probably get going on that even before some of these other things are in place if we i really will initiate that email to anna and libby and i will cc um joan susan and eliana on it okay um so I wanted to close out with getting, I, I guess we need to firm up our meeting schedule first. So um, how are people feeling? We have, I mean, I think the pace of this meeting was really manageable and it makes me feel like we're getting really close to the finish line. <laughs> um, so, you know, we can continue work in our working groups on sort of finalizing these drafts. Do you think we should meet again on the 6th or on the 13th, which are both Tuesdays? Um, we could meet on both, but for shorter amounts of time, just to sort of check in on the draft process. What are people's thoughts? I feel like, um... Like if we were to meet again next week, like I like most of the like time would just be with each subcommittee meeting with each other. Like that would be like a check-in point. But I also feel like those groups can sort of do that on their own times. Like I feel like maybe just having the thirteenth meeting is good, because um, between now and then it's just going to be the subcommittee committees working together, but. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, and the, the six is Zach's birthday, so. Yay. Last well, week. Joan celebrated her birthday with us, so we're expecting Zach to attend. 
We can throw you a party here. It's perfectly fine. Last week it worked really well to have the the meeting open um just to for for working groups to show up and make use of the breakout rooms and about half of us did and half of us didn't so um um and and my 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 working group talked about that 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 would be a good and helpful thing next tuesday so do we feel okay about a a non-mandatory but open room possibility yeah that's really easy for me to get um, organized so I can just uh, warn a meeting that's really just work time for the working groups and so and what we did is we just put all the working groups into breakout rooms for the entire duration of the meeting and then the working groups decided when they wanted to leave they just left and then some people organized outside of that time so yeah let's Let's plan on that a work group time scheduled for the sixth and if you don't if you can't meet on the sixth, you can schedule a different time over the next the course of the next couple of weeks. And then a regularly scheduled meeting on the 13th. Could I just ask it would be helpful for me to have um, at least a few days to review whatever the final sort of drafts of things are before the meeting on the third, because I'm assuming on the meeting on the 13th, we're really trying to like totally finalize what's gonna be presented the next day at the school board meeting. So for me, it would just given my time commitments and schedule be if we could set a deadline for things to be sent out to the committee. I, mean, I don't know if like the previous Friday or even Saturday before that meeting on the 13th, um, then I, I feel like I could have more, be more thoughtful in my responses to, to documents. Yes, I second that, Joan. Absolutely. It's so helpful. So if it would be okay, let's set the deadline for Thursday night, the 8th, anytime up till midnight on the 8th. And then I will have time on Friday to gather all the drafts and get them out to the committee. So deadline for final drafts from each working group Thursday the 8th. And sent to you, Emma. Email to me. Great. And also, like, I feel like the, the final draft for our, my subcommittee will sort of depend on the final drafts of the others. So, like, my final draft, like, it just won't be at the same time. Like there will be a have to be a window after that sort of. But your the other two committees don't depend on the work of our committee, so it it doesn't really matter. I just wanted to say that. I do think it would be nice to have like it's almost like the stuff that you're creating in your group would actually be good to present to the board. Um, and I think you were inferring that maybe you would send this letter to the local press prior to the April 14th meeting, board meeting? No. No, probably after. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, I wonder if we could, in those two documents, Susan and Elliot, just have a placeholder for like a, you know, two sentences about the what's presented on the 14th, because it seems like a lot of the, the rest of it we've already worked through. Yeah, thumbs up from Elliot. So we can have a pretty close. Yeah. After this. Yeah, I that's totally fine. That sounds good. Since we're actually going to be meeting two nights that week, maybe we want to make it a little bit shorter. <laughs> the meeting on the 13th. <laughs> what? Because <laughs> we're going to be meeting an hour the next night, I heard, but prior that's to the strange meeting. idea shorter meetings just a thought <laughs> um we request to be put at the beginning of the of the um agenda for the school board yeah i forget what happened last time was there something there was something before us right and you had the, to bu the budget it was pretty buried <laughs> yeah yep i will talk to jim about that I guess I was wondering if we meet on the 13th, do we need to meet on the 14th? Or is the re is the meeting on the 13th going to get us landed enough to be ready for the 14th? 
we could decide that night if we feel like we need more time. We Do also we could just meet for like a half an hour before the meeting. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know, like, I didn't feel like we needed it last time that we presented. It didn't feel like we really utilized that time. It was just more of like a check in. Um, so I agree that it's not necessary. Um, are we going to do the same sort of similar format? Again, putting students on the spot here where the students take the lead on presenting things to the board. Is that what other people were picturing? I would be, I'm interested, but I also like my work isn't, hasn't been in those other committees. So I'm less familiar with the material, but if that's something that people want I could review it but I just would it wouldn't be as strong as it could be just because I haven't been like doing that work but I can also just like read read something like I don't I don't mind I wonder if um maybe you could help us put the work into a visual presentation format and then the students could take the lead on sort of like intro the introduction of the presentation and then one member from each working group could present, you know, the draft, the final draft of what we've created for that working group. Oh, Emma, you're muted. Yeah, I was talking to my family, telling them to be quiet. <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, that also can be decided. Uh, I mean, I guess it can't be decided on the 13th. That's sort of what I'm getting at is that if we want somebody to take the lead on creating like a PowerPoint or a presentation, Google Slides, we probably should figure that out tonight. It seemed like the last time, even though the board had gotten packets ahead of time, it did seem like the visuals did have impact. So I'm kind of thinking about if you're sitting there and you're in a board member, having slides probably does help. So I think it might be a good way for us to go. I have an idea that we have this deadline of the eighth. Um, if someone could take the lead on just creating the the slide deck that this stuff will go into it could be part of our work that we that we have the deadline of the eighth to do for each working group to put their stuff into the slide that corresponds like there's probably just one slide that corresponds with the policy recommendations and it would be on my group's job to fill out that slide and then there could be somebody who makes it more you know formats it to look all smooth and you know can cohesive and whatever after the eighth, but that could just be part of our um, work that's due by the end of the day on the eighth. If somebody can take point on just like making that space, <laughs> like actual slides, or maybe we could just make a copy of the one that the students that you created for February and we just clear all the stuff out of it and put our new stuff in. It's probably the easiest way to do that. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, I could do it. I don't know if um, whoever created the first presentation, if you could share it with me so that I can steal it. Zach, was it you? <laughs> I can't even really remember. Um, I'm not sure, but I can find it. Thank you. Thanks for doing that. So yeah, I like that um, just, it would be, ed everyone would have editing privileges and over the course of the next couple of weeks, you would sort of plug your stuff in, uh, in your working groups. Okay. Um, someone mentioning board packet made me think, is there a deadline for a packet to give to the board? with our presentation materials to present that we need to be working with in terms of final documents? I think um, Anna, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mia. 
Hannah tries to send it out the Friday before, but there are often things that get added bef with less lead time. So I think if we ha felt good about our final product on the 13th, it would be fine to send it the morning of the 14th. Ask Emma, uh, Anna to share it the morning of the 14th. It's not perfect, but I think it would be fine. Yeah, and actually there are other instances where we've had trainings where the actual training slide deck was not shared with us until the moment that it was being presented to us. So I don't think it's critical that it's shared ahead of time, but it's always nice. It definitely last time I felt like there was just so much data for, for people to sift through if they were interested in looking at all of those survey results. I wanted to give them the opportunity to do that, but I think with this one, um, it's not as important that we provide the information ahead of time. So I want to just close by going around and just hearing sort of final thoughts of where people's heads are at after tonight's meeting. Um, it can be a real simple one word answer um, or sort of closing thoughts. Um, Amanda, will you start? Yeah, absolutely. I um, well, I, I came into this meeting really tired, um, and I'm leaving feeling re uh, rejuvenated somewhat. I feel really excited about all the work everyone's done, and I feel like we've all put in a lot of time <laughs> this year. And everyone, I don't know. I'm just feeling really grateful and impressed and excited. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Well, hi. Okay, you said hi. Now scoot. Scoot. He's my papa. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I was I was going to say something about um my brain being optimistic mush and feeling th this. Most committees that I've been on kind of fizzle at, at, at some point, but this actually, this this feels lasting, like something, not only that we accomplish something substantive, but that it has um, really significant ripple effects. And that is a tremendous feeling. So thank you all. Thanks, Will. Catherine? Well, I have enjoyed I'm a relationship person, although I'm an introvert, but I've enjoyed getting to know everybody and um, just kind of working past our differences to a unified vision for our community, which is in the schools within it, um, and just creating something that's practical and tangible and not this abstract aspirational thing, but something that um, I think, like Will said, can actually come to fruition and we'll see results and positive results that'll bring people closer together. And that is all. Thanks, Catherine. Eliana? Um, I feel really good coming out of this meeting. Um, I, I really love this committee and it's cool how we've just always been on a computer together and yet I get so much meaning out of all the conversations we have and it's cool and I just feel like it's a really good um, resource for the school like in terms of having committees like this because it just allows for a lot more communication between the administration and the people in it in the community and I like that's just so important and I just think it's really cool that we get to do this every few weeks. Thanks Eliana. Joan? Yeah I'm feeling really grateful for this committee's work and um, and it's it's always a good feeling um, to feel of use. And I feel like our committee's work is, is really been of use and will continue to be um, for our schools and our, and our broader community and our students. So um, I'm feeling good about where we are. Yeah, and the combination of um, aspirational and pragmatic 
is impactful, I think. Thanks, Joan. Susan? So, um, yeah, I, like, like all of you, I feel really hopeful. And it, it's really nice to um, be on a committee that's been really organized and focused. And um, I really feel like the, our community is going to benefit and the children and youth in our community especially will benefit from the work we're doing. And that's just heartwarming. And I've also enjoyed really getting to know all of you and working with you. It's been really nice. It's been rewarding. Thank you, Susan. Mia? Um, I don't think I have much to add to what folks have said. I, I also have felt like this work has been really rewarding and at times, you know, hard and hard to find the time to do it, but also feeling really motivated to, to do it um, in part sometimes because I didn't want to let the rest of the committee down. Like I've really felt like everybody's been putting in such an effort and it's really been just such an amazing um, work of this team that I didn't want to be the one that was like, oh, now we got to wait on her. Um, so <laughs> that's been motivating, but also just our broader mission has been really motivating for me. So I, um, yeah, I'm just really, really um, grateful to have been able to have been a, a part of it with all of you. Thank you, Mia. Edie? Um, well, a lot of the stuff that's already been said, uh, like I've heard a lot of sentiments that I share. Uh, like I'm coming out of this me meeting feeling good about where we're at. Um, for a little while, it felt like we had to kick our momentum back up, but I really think we have, um, especially after tonight. Um, we just have so much and it feels kind of sudden um and that just excites me um and um i also just feel like even though we've only met over zoom that these relationships are there's something i get out of these meetings that's um not what i would have expected to exactly um i think that like there is a connection that you can make even like without being face to face. Thank you, Edie. Zach? Um, I think a lot of <laughs> a lot of what has been said. Um, it's nice to see like real tangible like change happen from like something that feels at least for me, sometimes it can feel a little not real just being like on a Zoom meeting um, in general. Um, and seeing something come from that has been really good. And I think it's fun. Thank you, Zach. Thank you all. Um, yeah, I'm feeling all the same feels that all of you have talked about. and feeling a real sense of pride and accomplishment and um, connection. And Catherine wrote about getting together after all this is said and done. And I, I agree, I can't wait when that is a reality. Um, and I think everyone's like 16-ish, so maybe we can all be vaccinated <laughs> by the end of summer. Um, yeah, I, I agree with what Edie said about, and some others also echoed, about feeling a little like there was times where things felt a little overwhelming and like, I don't know if we're gonna get there. Like, I don't even know what this looks like anymore. What are we doing? And then tonight, I really felt like there was something, some aha moments tonight where things became clear and came into focus. And um, now I'm feeling really good. <laughs> And I and I've been trusting in that process and trusting in the, the makeup of this committee all along like it will it'll work out like something's gonna it's gonna clarity will come. And I think Mia said it a few meetings ago is the special sauce of this committee, but there's there's some special sauce happening here. So cheers, thank you all. And 
I think we can say good night and I will email with warnings and um, you know bullet points and notes from our meeting tonight. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Good night.